Welcome back to part three of our caravan renovation. If you watched our latest episode, you'll remember this is where we we're up to. If you didn't get to watch that episode, just keep watching now for a quick recap. So Dan and I waterproofed all the inside of the ensuite. So we did the floors and the walls. We then also went in with the foil board and cut that to size so there was no gaps around the edges. We glued that in and then we applied glue all over the top of that and then we got our white wall panels. Now we roughed the inside of the wall panels up just so that it was actually going to stick a little bit better onto the wall and we firmly pressed those ones in and let them dry for a day. I then went around and puttied up all the nail holes and screw holes from the exterior sides of the walls. I also sanded them so they're ready to be painted. Dan went in and then he actually cut the holes for the light switches on the outside of the ensuite. And then we went into the inside and did for the light switch in there. And he also cut the hole for the light and for the exhaust fan on the roof. So make sure you keep watching for all the next details of the renovation. So we've had a rechange of what we're going to do with the shower base. We were going to use these white wall panels, build our own shower floor, angle it with the framing so that the water would run down. But I've had a way better and easier idea. I'm actually going to buy a pre-existing shower base already made that actually does fit in our specs and then cut out the actual shape of the wheel arch into that actual base. And we think that should work really, really well. Way quicker, a lot cheaper, less fiddly, and it will just look so much nicer, we think. So that's the plan we're going with at the moment. So the next step was measuring out the dimensions for the wheel arch. We then used those to map out that onto the shower base and used our grinder and our renovator tool to cut that piece out. We made sure we measured multiple times before we did any cutting just to make sure there was no errors. So just here you'll see an arrow up here. It looks like we cut it too short, but that's a little bit of the framing covered with the waterproofing, so it looks like it's the floor. We then added some framing underneath just to make it a little bit more supported when you do step on it, applied glue underneath, and then we stuck that down. We waited quite a few hours before we did anything else near the shower base just to make sure it was really stuck in well. So the next image is exactly how it turned out. So Dan has already drilled three holes into the bottom of the caravan. These are there for the water pipes for the vanity. Now I've then gone and siliconed all around those pipes. We've then also cut the same holes into the white wall panels. We then slowly push in those pipes all the way through. We have also applied some liquid nails already onto the top of the framing so that we can then push our white wall panels down. Now it is much more of a nicer, sleeker finish. So we did the water pipes towards the back of the wall because there's going to be a hollow gap behind the vanity. The vanity is still going to sit towards the front of the wheel arch. Now we did that mainly because we do not want those water pipes to actually take out any of the crucial storage. Now we are also going to be doing a little bit of wall panelling along the top to seal and then to the side. So at any angle you're standing you'll not be able to see any of the hollow behind the vanity. So it's a little bit hard to see exactly what I'm doing, but I've used the same Maranti wood that we did for the framing and I've cut that into small little pieces just to try and make a little bit of a support so that when I do the white wall panelling to finish the tops and the side of the vanity off, it will be nice and flush and then it won't actually bow down as well. So I've glued them on with liquid nails, taped them into place so that they don't fall down and slide left them for quite a few hours and then I went back to cut the wall panelling strips and then to glue them over the top just so it's a nice flush finish. So 
So I just popped a line of silicon just to finish the sink and the wall together. Now there is gonna be a video after all these renovations are completed that goes over some of the things that we do wish we could have changed and gone back in time and done. Part of that is going to be some information about the silicon in. So if you haven't actually committed to starting your renovation yet, make sure you do watch that video when it is up because it will be quite helpful because we wish we could have gone back in time. So our next step was applying some silicon in between the gaps of the corners and also the gaps where the roof meets the wall. We applied that the whole way down and then we used our Bunnings white angle that we bought. You can't see that in this video because I've already pushed it into the wall, but all you do is apply some pressure, push it in, wipe any excess of the silicon off. We let that dry and then I came back and actually did a line of silicon on both edges of the sides just so it's a little bit more of a flush appearance so it looks nice and smooth. So at this point of the renovation, it's still through COVID and things were completely out of stock. So we ended up only finishing the shower base at this point in time with just a strip of silicon. If this was you in the renovation, we would recommend that you actually do the metal edging along the bottom, exactly how we did the corners and the roof as well. At the time, it was weeks and weeks to wait for anything to get ordered in and we only had a small amount of the edging left to finish off the tops of the wheel arch and things like that. So eventually in time, we will go back to maybe either do another alternative or the metal edging just to finish that bottom base. As you can see, this is just a bit of a video closer up so you can see the silicon in job. So I've done all down the corners and the roof in. I've left those little bits in the corners. I just want everything to dry first so that I don't smudge how perfect the line looks. And then I'll go back and silicon over where the corners do join together. We then also silicon the bottom edge of the shower base as well. So that's all looking nice. We still have to do the metal edging just along those side bits of the wheel arch, but that's what we're up to now. And then I also have to do the little part just on the outside part of the shower base. Just that little bit with the white angle all around the edging down there and then that part's completely done. Okay guys, so I've just got a delivery. So this is our Glide Away shower retractable screen that we've got. So it's gonna be a bit awkward for me to show you while trying to film and holding with one hand. So we actually went the white screen instead for a couple of reasons why. I'm just gonna see if I can hold this out. I'll put the phone down and then come back, just so you can see it a little bit of a better angle with the color. So the white is actually like quite white. It is completely opaque. So my hand is behind that and you cannot see it at all. So the main reason we went white is because the amount of different ones, videos, sorry, that we watched with these retractable screens, they all had the opaque version, which was either just like the opaque plain, or there was ones that were plain with stripes down the middle. Now, every video that we watched from the actual Glide Away company or um, Nautilus, like there's a few different brands, they all looked very opaque. But when I just looked at people that were just normal everyday people doing a caravan vlog sort of thing, you could always kind of see people's bodies behind it and some were actually quite see-through. So we actually wanted to go the white one just because we like white anyway. It's just, it matches the colors that we're gonna be doing in the caravan anyway. Um, but I'm just one of those weirdos that I get super self-conscious if people can kind of see through. So I just feel a lot better going the white color, knowing it's completely opaque than the one that is meant to be opaque, but really isn't. So didn't cost us any extra dollars. The white was the same color, but just for peace of mind, I just feel so much more comfortable knowing that it's going to be completely opaque. Um, so that if anyone else besides someone that you're, you know, in your family with or your partner or whatnot is actually in the van as well, you don't have to feel self-conscious.
Okay, so for the flat parts of the panels that we need for the edging, um, nowhere had the white flat bar that we were wanting and because we're kind of in a desperate hurry to finish it. So we bought these from Bunnings. I'll try and get a bit of angle so you can see. That's what they look like and now. And what I'm actually doing is cutting right in the middle, cutting that smaller part off. So it ends up looking just like this instead. And we're going to use that flat part there to be able to join these flat butt joints together. So I'll take you to the garden and show this little part that I cut. So this is the butt joint that I'm talking about. So if at the time we knew everything was going to be completely sold out and we couldn't get the aluminium flat bars that we wanted, we would have ended up using exactly what I just literally cut in half now, but with those you're meant to actually be using them at the time that you put the wall panel in so you can tuck them into each other. But we've just done this now, so we've just cut it into that T-bar sort of shape. So we can just put that and silicon inside onto that gap. It should still work fairly well. So this part down the bottom will just sort of tuck into that little plastic bit of the window edge and it should be fine. I may end up painting it too just so it matches a little bit closer to the actual white that the wall panels are. But it is quite lightweight as well, so it's a quick, easy fix. Coming up in the next episode is all information about prepping for painting and doing the painting. So it's removing all the old doors, we re-spray painted the hinges, redid the door handles, did the priming, we actually ended up doing a white and a grey on the walls. We do explain our colour choices and what whether we went gloss or matte with that. We hated our old creamy brown fridge so we primed it and then we spray painted it black ready to look a little bit more modern. We also hated our bed head, so that one had florals on, so I stained that with a mix of water and paint to look a little bit more modern. Dan changed the light switches and the power points to the matte black and added some lighting in. We also painted the windows as well, so make sure you keep watching, like and subscribe on YouTube and follow our Instagram page.